Okay, our little Reliant K car needs a little bit of love. We actually never did anything to it. We just drove it home and then we're driving it around locally. But uh, we're gonna spruce this thing up so she looks brand spanking new from the outside and runs properly. Here we go. one owner car, so it sat in an underground garage for years. The one thing Dodge has never done is build a mid-engine supercar. I mean, in the back seat, rear wheel drive, do like a wheeling machine. 25 mile an hour is tops for this. So the next hour will tell us whether it can make the 14 hour drive home or not. Only a matter of time until we got her back in the shop to get some goodies done to her. All right, I'm gonna paint the trim of the K car. I uh, switched out to LED bulbs around the whole car. We have to figure out what the heck is inside this trunk lid. Holy moly. Oh, well, look at how tight that fit is. It's a thing of beauty. Okay, so to start off, we've got the plugs, ignition modules, or I don't know what this is. I just ordered everything I could for a 2.6 uh, Mitsubishi K-Car engine. What's happening is when you're driving, sometimes it'll just like, you can just barely keep it running and you can move, you can't shift, top speed's like 20 and then you shut it off and then it works again. So it makes me think that it's like something like this where sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't make bad connection. So if you're experiencing the same thing with your K car, I know you're already tuned out of this video. The funny thing is because there were so many of these and they were so cheap, everybody drove them and drove them into the ground and uh, crushed them all. There were so many of them, but there's so few of them left. There's diehards out there and there's, um, you got rare models like a manual turbo minivan. Um, and then the wood paneling is pretty rare too. Now we bought this cause it was reasonably priced in our area. Um, Aaron's kind of a nerd and <laughs> he likes these cars, nerd. And <laughs> actually this car gets just as many looks as the GTO almost. What's funny about this is that these are actually starting to become more and more valuable because everybody hated them so much that they crushed them all. So uh, we were gonna put an engine in the back, more than likely we still will at some point, uh, but it runs good enough for us to drive around town and uh, get laughed at by a certain amount of people, get, um, get cat calls from other people, keep this on the road and just drive it until we get all the parts to put a Hemi in the rear end, uh, keep a dual engine and just kind of a mockery of a drag car, but still the plans we have for that are pretty expensive. So we're just gonna drive it as is for now, but we still wanna keep the outside original looking. So we're gonna do a nice job cleaning that up. This maintenance stuff is just uh, nothing to it. Take the old parts off, put the new parts in, and then you're done. Um, but we'll get into uh, sprucing up the wood grain, redoing some of the stickers, polishing the paint maybe a little bit, see if we can get a bit of a shine out of it and then uh call it good here we go now you can see that but that would definitely be part of the problem those don't look good at all problem is we couldn't get a rotor for some reason i don't know why clean that up should be okay that's good enough nice all right let's give that a go Look at this minty interior oh Does your car start that good? This is a 1984. Look, look at that. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Don't make them like they used to. Okay, so now this exhaust pipe is leaking. Somebody put like tin around it and tried to stop that, but that did not fix it. Can't find that pipe anywhere. What are the chances that that breaks loose? Now, if I was smart, I would have sprayed some of this on there weeks ago, months ago, a year ago, when we got the car. Maybe hit it once a, once a month, just lube it up, let that sit on there, but no, no, no. 
I wait until, oh yeah, I should fix that pipe and do it now. Put a wrench on there. And see, I don't think I'm gonna strip it. This side looks like it'll come out. So I'll try that. And then if not, a little bit of heat. I know it's just emissions. I could probably just plug weld that pipe shut, but we'll try anyway, who knows? Maybe just keeping this original another 20 years, it'll, it'll be as hot of an item as like an old Ferrari or something, sell for $60 million. But instead of taking the nut off there, I'll just take the valve off, the hose off the bottom. Oh, well there's the problem. Yeah, that would do it. You see that? That is not supposed to be in what, that's supposed to be connected. <laughs> Don't think I can fix it. <laughs> Let's see if the other end comes off. I'm gonna have to heat that. All I did for, is that no two sensor? That's not no two sensor. Whatever it's plugged, supposed to, oh. Uh, did somebody? That's on. Right. That's probably supposed to be connected to that. But anyway, I wasn't looking at that. I was looking at the pipe. And uh, all I did was pinch it shut and uh, welder solid because whatever pipe, whatever that pipe is supposed to do, whether it preheat the air into the carburetor or emissions, it seems to be working just fine without it. So since I can't get that pipe, I wasn't going to spend too long trying to fix it. It was pretty holy. It was a holy pipe. Oh. Now it's a, yeah, now it's a solid pipe. <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been straight it's been healed <laughs> now it's a straight pipe so yes we still have our fuel pump that is rigged up with a wire that i forget what we connected it to in the parking lot with one of the holly guys way back and we said that that was going to be temporary but we all knew that was a lie <laughs> <laughs> semi-temporary <laughs> <laughs> when it breaks we'll replace it now we got the tune-up done it does fire up right away like it doesn't turn over once yeah and it's started, it, like it's on the first tooth boom it is crazy eh? as soon as it makes contact it's like, it, doesn't, boom, it doesn't turn over once so yeah great great little engine um who's been driving it i've been driving it oh aaron aaron uh, uh, it says ad that's I, I can read the d goes right through the past the rings I'm yelling at Aaron for not checking the oil, but I don't know if we've ever actually done an oil change on this thing. So we're just talking that I'm pretty sure the oil in this thing is like 20, 25 years old when it was at last room, 96. 96. So 30 years old. So it must have 28. Been it's 20, it's 28 years old. <laughs> it must have Rotella in it because there's no way any other. <laughs> I think Aaron saw that when the engine blew up in the Bronco, that's when it got a coyote. Oh. So I think if he's like, if I blow up this little 2.6, it'll get the Hemi. Self-sabotaging for a reason. <laughs> Good thinking, Aaron. Well, I don't know what we should do. Maybe we should put it in a 5.7 or something. I don't know, or whatever. All right, so it's running good. It's got oil in it. Uh, we will do an oil change on it. Not right now, because I don't have the filter. I don't know why I didn't grab an engine oil filter, but I am heading away for a couple of weeks. So Andy's going to take over this girl. We're going to spruce it up a little bit. Whatever we do to the car, we're not going to change the outside. We love the, the paneling, the hubcaps, the 80s vintage look. So we're just going to keep it together and uh keep driving it because there's nothing wrong with it and it actually gets quite a bit of attention doesn't it, it? gets a ton of attention i've never driven I i'm gonna say this is probably the only car that i'll be driving along my cell phone rings i take a look I'm like oh i haven't talked to them in a while hey what's happening man hey are you driving a uh like a station wagon like a woody station wagon i've probably got half a dozen of those phone calls in the last <laughs> man probably three months and they want to know the deal if it was is it for sale <laughs> the eventual plans are just putting a hemi in the back doing a drag and drive event with it but the only legal car to do so so you go to the track you run on the back engine stick the front in neutral do your quarter mile pass and then disconnect the back put your road tires back on again and drive from track to track on the 2.6 that would be awesome and it would but all i'm seeing is like that's like a thousand hours and probably 40 grand. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just drive it as it is. All right, so the K car is going to get a little bit of love. We're going to go over top that veneer, the mahogany, that nice mahogany that's around the outside there. It's kind of starting to chip. So we're going to kind of smooth that out. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to get that vinyl wrap. Aaron's going to paint up all the trim along the side there, put it back to its original color. That's kind of faded, sun faded. All right, I'm going to paint the trim of the K car. And uh, I'm just taping it all off right now. I got this uh, Carlon Fusion all-in-one. This one is a uh, 
matte river rock color and actually I tested it out and it was pretty well indistinguishably the same as this layer tone here um, spray painting I'm not gonna get any texture on this but there's texture built into this this is kind of like a resin filament and it's got some texture built into it so I'm hoping that that'll still show through a little bit um, there's not really a way that I can think to uh, get that texture to really pop out but uh, this is the resin color a lot of this is just completely gone so we're gonna touch it up this stuff really adheres well for like a what's going to be outside all the time. It's kind of hard to pick a good paint, but I'm just going to uh, use some acetone and uh, kind of clean this up a little bit and then spray it after we uh, cover the car with some, some plastic and uh, it should be good. Aaron did a fantastic job, but uh, he gets to miss out on the worst, on the best part, because I got to unwrap it. I need to move this out so I can get other stuff in. This is always my favorite part. Everything leading up to this point, I hate doing. So it's win-win for me. Sorry, Aaron. Okay, so we're we're gonna rewrap the wood on this car but uh, just a little tip if you are going to paint something like this don't use this big wide tape because you peel off most of the wrap underneath what you want to do is a nice thin just uh, the thin tape just around the edges and then paper or plastic over top this was supposed to be quick unwrap this is the longest it's ever taken me to unwrap a car it's not as much fun as I thought it was gonna be <laughs> here we go back it's only a matter of time till we got her back in the shop to get some goodies done to her uh, but check out this vinyl wrap she's getting a bit crusty um, the laminate was kind of lifting off and flaking away but uh, stick it in Dunville paint the trim looking pretty snazzy yeah did a great job on it look at that That's some good stuff so we're gonna get into some odds and ends here well we got some time in the shop with it uh, number one thing is we have to figure out what the heck is inside this trunk lid. Holy moly, it weighs, I mean, I'm a pretty strong guy, I think, but uh, I don't know, it's got to weigh f probably 80 pounds. I don't know why it's such a big load on that trunk, but uh, I don't know, maybe all you derby guys out there, you should have been looking at these guys for derbies. They're just built solid. Maybe it was a derby driver that had it and they built it right up. Let's investigate, let's see what's under there. Like working on uh, those oh what kind of vehicles is it the Kias and Hyundai's from like the mid 2000s you just touch the plastic and just goes <clears throat> just crumbles in your hand so I don't think this is that bad but I should do this right there we go there's some weird insulation from the 1980s I guess it's not that heavy. <laughs> yeah, that's not heavy, but we'll get rid of that just in case it's something yucky. What is it? It's under there. What do you hide? Look right. how heavy this is, Vince. We got a couple bets going on. What could be that? Okay. Steel, steel. You think that's all it is? <laughs> We're thinking it might have been, might have something in it. You think that's just real thick steel? Yeah, that's pretty heavy. That's the real deal. Combination of glass and stuff too. Yeah. I thought maybe it had like a 
just a giant uh, motor on there or something. <laughs> the giant wiper motor. Just thick steel and heavy glass. I guess when you're gonna have your kids sitting in the back, you kinda you want it to be safe, safe, right? Safe, yeah. yeah, mystery solved. <laughs> So yeah, radio never worked off the hop here. Either way, we're putting in, we're upgrading the stereo. It's a single DIN. It's gonna look pretty cool in here. It's gonna have all the updated features. Uh, it's push button, connect to Bluetooth, all that kind of good stuff. So all comes in a, in a single DIN radio, which is uh, pretty neat, so. Is that it? I was very nervous there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's in perfect condition. <laughs> yeah. Should help the cruising around. But yeah, this whole man, this this is a long piece of brittle plastic. We're talking man, 40, 40 year old plastic. So ooh, that was nerve wracking trying to get that out without cracking it. Let's get these screws out and pull that radio. New radio is about 20% of this size. Operation radio extraction. Save that just in case one day someone wants one of those. Here's that single DIN radio. It kind of fits in that uh, space of just one single height radio rather than the double DIN. Okay, so that fits right in there, bolts up on either side. So we're gonna be looking for that from our face place face plate kit. Have a mount there and there. And then that's what will keep it steady. Then we put the dash back on. Uh, we'll have the links to this radio and uh, this install kit uh, that we got. I think we got both these off of Amazon. So yeah, check them out. Um, but that's what we're going to be using here. It's pretty simple. Just match up the colors, blue to blue, purple to purple, all the speaker wires, power wire, accessory wire. It's all real simple. So it looks like we got it all going. Just going to give it a little test run here. See if we can figure it out. I don't know if we've. Oh, oh there we go. We do have power to the speakers. Yeah, didn't know if we had uh, speakers here or not, but looks like we do. And I want AM radio. Trying to. Oh. It's my jam. All about that bass. About that bass. No treble. <laughs> Speaker upgrade. <laughs> this thing is not about the bass. <laughs> this thing is just about the treble. All right, so it looks like uh, speaker upgrade is next. <laughs> Unless you want to cruise around and listen to. <laughs> that looks like a pretty good fit. There we go. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. That delay is just enough to get you. That is sick. And it's synced to my phone already. There we go. Let's, let's, let's see that now. Synced. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Dude. That's, awesome, man. that's a that's a win. That's that awesome when that happens. Dude, we got maps. Oh, that is that's so sick. It's funny that this little screen has more info than the entire car. <laughs> <laughs> Fuel, speed, and then what's going on with your doors. Yeah, and then there's an engine light on for some reason right now. Fuel pump's just been running like crazy. Yeah, Testing maybe. This. Sweet. Oh, engine light code. Oh, that goes off. There we go. Sweet. 
dude. <laughs> it's such a sweet upgrade. This would be a dream, like from like in high school. Oh these. man. Putting all new speakers in it, put in an amp 20 inch sub in the back. Just <laughs> rattle the whole block as you drive by. Playing Brass Monkey by Beastie Boys. Oh, so sick. Look at that. Look at, well, look at the, how tight that fit is. It's a thing of beauty. Oh, yeah. Be nice, be nice. Come on. Oh, yeah. Nice. Just have, have to put uh, some screws in. There should be like Amazon awards or something like that. Like once a year, like the best, the people that produce the best parts. Like, <laughs> and the best Amazon. quality in radio fitment 2023, your champions. Oh, that's just the bracket. Yeah. Well, that's what, oh yeah, that's what I mean, the bracket people. <laughs> I'm giving them the credit. Metraonline.com. You guys did a heck of a job. Good job. Everyone gets a raise there. Got this dash off. So this still has to get bolted back down. But pretty simple. It's got four or five screws up at the top, right at the back there. Maybe five or six screws down below. And then this whole cover pops off. Get access to the whole thing there. So this uh, speaker on this side. This one was blown, so it was rattling a lot. So we got that one swapped out. We ended up going with these pile speakers off of Amazon. Uh, these three and a half inch speakers. They put out great sound. Uh, seemed to be more of a mid-range sound that we're looking for rather than these other ones. I did hook them up. Really tangy, really, really powerful highs. Not really what we need in this car. Um, we don't have door speakers here, so those are basically our, our main speakers in the front. We don't want it just highs. We want mids and highs to come out of that. So that was a better fit for what we need it for. Um, so replace those both sides while I was digging around. Notice that this is something that should have a speaker in it maybe. Um, so I did splice these back, hooked it up to a speaker. Um, no bueno, no good. There's no volume going to that. So I don't know if it's not hooked up uh, to the back of the deck. I'm gonna have to take a look, see if we can hook up another speaker. If not, then might have to just toss a jumper over from from one of these guys at some point. We check out these six by nines in the back. They're still working okay. Bit of a pain, pain in the butt to get to. We have to take out that whole panel along the side just to be able to unbolt those six by nines. So we're just leaving those ones stock there for now. Not really necessary to swap them out. We're not looking for high performance audio or anything like that. Just something that doesn't rattle and crack when you're driving along. Did a full cleanup on it. Shampoo the carpet, steam cleaned it all. Now my wife bought this. No, I think I bought it for her. I think it was a couple Christmases ago, probably about six or seven Christmases ago. Uh, but after time, after a couple of years, the battery gave out. I think it was around 50, 60 bucks to get one of these. I don't know if that was through Dyson or, on, or through Amazon or whatever, but it kind of seems like a lot of money. These are a lot of money. So as I was browsing around the other day, I noticed that you could get ones that adapt your Milwaukee M18 to it. Now this is super duper handy because now I can use it for vehicles. So my wife didn't know this was around still. She doesn't even miss it. And now I got probably the best portable vacuum cleaner uh, to clean up all the DeBoss rides. So check her out. Pretty cool. I'm gonna see what else I can uh, get adapters for. I want a Milwaukee everything. Uh, I switched out to LED bulbs around the whole car. These are all LEDs now. This just pops out. And on these older ones, you kind of notice how on that plastic on the inside, it kind of looks like it's burnt a bit. It's probably because it's burnt a bit. Those bulbs are pretty hot, uh, uh, like yeah. those old ones. As soon as you put the LEDs in there, you can put your finger right on it. You don't feel any yeah. heat. And they even have a heat sink in behind, which is kind of <laughs> ironic because they put out almost no heat. But, <laughs> but those other ones like are hot. Like you could fry an egg on it if it's big enough. So we got one of the struts that we replaced here. Now you're not gonna believe this, but there isn't like a common like you can't go into the parts store and say, hey, I need one of these hatch struts for a 1984 beauty station wagon. We measured it up, but we're probably about an inch, inch and a half short of where we want it to be as far as length here. So put these on to try them, but unfortunately we could only get up so far with this hatch. So you don't want to be loading up your groceries and knocking your teeth out as you're uh, loading them up here. So we had to get ones with drilled out eyelets 
So Aaron ended up picking these ones up. They are full stainless. So it's going to be shining. Okay, so that one's in. Ooh. There we go. Hold it up with one pinky. Come on, fit in there. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look Does how it open? It is. Does it open? Oh. So we just need one more. Uh... <laughs> so, all the rest of you guys that have these uh, K car station wagons, I know there's a lot of us out there. Probably hundreds, maybe a hundred. Either way, these are the parts for your car. You're going to want this one. Links down in the description. There's going to be one guy commenting going, Yeah, we are, no, we already knew that. Yeah, it's on the forums. There we go. Yeah, you're going to have to be careful unlocking it. It's just going to go yeah. like a catapult. Sweet. All right, let's see. See if it auto. Oh. Does it go up? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> This is way too exciting. Oh, yeah. It's never been that high up. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't know what to do. <sighs> get other K-car owners. How'd you get the door to go so high? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of mods did you have to do? <laughs> yeah, it's too bad we threw out all that mercury out of the hatch. Hey, Rich, you got to check this out. Oh. Do you remember this before? I did. Check this out. <laughs> wow. And I, it stopped here before, didn't it? Yeah, you had to like, <laughs> you had to load up your stuff like this. <laughs> and hold it on your back. But honestly, <laughs> yeah. it weighs 800 pounds. What was it? Uh, you're not going to believe this, but it was all 100% Colombian <laughs> steel. <laughs> steel. It was all steel. I even had Vince check it out. There's nothing in there? Nothing in there. No, nope. I swear the thing weighed 800 pounds. It, oh, do well. it does. I See? thought it was sagging on the back because of the weight of the hatch. It's probably triple plane glass in there. <laughs> <Is it> bulletproof? <laughs> yeah. Bulletproof yeah. Glass. <laughs> this is a Pope mobile one. <laughs> we'll find out that it was actually a Pope mobile back in 1986. <laughs> What's going on with the hubcaps? This, <laughs> this one's a touchy subject. Yeah. So, what you there's a difference between what you want. And what you actually get. Is that a zip tie? That's a zip tie. <laughs> <laughs> so we're try we tried everything we could. So Aaron got these. It's uh, from a 1965 Dodge Monaco, I believe. So these are super fancy. Like they're well you built. Can stick it on there if you want. Yeah, yeah, they'll clip on. They'll get on there, but so it's a little tight. But as soon as you hit a bump, <laughs> done. So now you got you got a pizza cutter rolling down the road behind, beside you. So that's not ideal. We tried everything we could. So these were actually from a five bolt car. So what we did, we trimmed these down. Uh, we did a lot of modifications. It's all bad. <laughs> it's all bad. We, we, we trimmed these down. How'd you balance it? <laughs> it weighs like five pounds. <laughs> With the zip ties. That, that's a stabilizer. <laughs> And all the energy goes right to the middle of this cone. <laughs> <laughs> so these nice rally, these nice rally caps would have been great. They looked great. We can't do anything to stick these on. Just okay. These can't spring out far enough. We we've tried different methods. We I tried. I, I think with this lip, if we took the wheels off and we cut a lip into the rim, just like a little bit, and this limb would this lip would grab that, but they're not going to fit on my lathe. <laughs> uh, we already bought new ones we got new ones yeah we got a little bit too much time invested into these hubcaps <laughs> by a little bit too <sighs> whoa <laughs> those are the lightest hubcaps someone must have just 3d printed it and sent it over to us <laughs> with like with like the single strand of plastic but this is what we got so it's what you want versus what you get so we wanted those but this is what we get because that's what fits on Okay, but I'm not gonna badmouth these too much. These are tough to come across. Four bolt, 14 inch hubcaps. A lot of people aren't gonna believe this. That's around my age and older uh, because 14s were on everything back in the day. Every Civic, every- Cavalier. Cavalier, anything. Sun, Sunbird. Yep, every small four bolt. There used to be tons available. Now the minimum you can get on, or I think the minimum size on a 
on a little cheap car is probably like an 18 inch rim. So there's just nothing out there for 14s anymore. No one's making stuff for 14 inch. So it's, it's better than just black rims and it's better than those painted off white ones that we that were originally on it. But if there's some vintage people out there that know more than we I don't have I don't have time to look and try to figure out hubcaps. But if you have 14 inch four bolts that look a little bit more vintage and a lot less like I went to Canadian Tire and like use my paycheck to spruce up my ride for Friday night. Looking yeah. rims, wheels, hubcaps. Let us know. Send us a, a PM on Instagram or something and we'll buy those off you because the car looks fantastic. I love the I love the wrap. I love the, the, the paint. Like it's all it's all there. I could maybe drive it around like as <laughs> it's getting dark. <laughs> but the hubcaps, yeah. We need something better. Like this thing gets uh, I'm gonna this thing gets nearly as much attention. Not as much as the 55, not as much joy come to people at 55, but no one calls me up and says, hey, was that you in the 55? Usually I just get waves on the road. This one, people actually call me up and say, hey, what, was that you driving a station wagon? It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> my, my girls love this car. They, they love the way it smells. They love the way it rides. Like they love going in the back. Both doors open now. Yeah. Yeah, but but my <laughs> wife hates it. My wife just absolutely hates this car. She doesn't, <laughs> doesn't understand. Um I don't know if you've seen these yet. But all oh, upgraded yeah. LED lights all throughout. <laughs> Down there, up there. Oh, uh, we got the headliner. Oh, it's not touching my my bald head rubbing me as we go anymore. Well, in certain spots. Certain spots. It looks like set. the it looks like the the very poofy couches. Like a pen like cushion it? kind of. Yeah, know. like a pen cushion. It oh, looks like a know. topographical map. <laughs> so it's like 3D risk. <laughs> a 3D upside down risk board. <laughs> They're gonna attempt. Six out of ten. Six out of ten. <laughs> Three. Best. Three. We got to do this at night then. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and, it's, and it's wet weather. So we're going to be using this mostly on hotter days as well. So once it's hotter, <laughs> that headliner is going to stick up a bit better. What world are you living? <laughs> All right, it's a five. It's, a it's funny that a simple old car can give you this much joy. But, uh, oh, one other thing. Joe, the co-op student, he's getting out and he put his yeah. hand here and I closed the door on him. And like, put, so make sure that you like really pay attention you don't close the doors oh. joe was good about it there was no damage but our girls will be very upset oh, yeah. we're going to continue driving this so you'll see this thing driving around dunvald one of us is going to be in it um and uh yeah we're not going to put the hemi in it just yet we have the hemi so we're looking for a transaxle automatic that can handle a hemi with a blower on it but it's not high on our priority list i've got a lot of other stuff on the go we've got the gator coming up on the other channel that's got a complete redo. Um, the Fargo's got a pile of work done to it. Silverado has its transmission rebuilt and a bunch of work done to it. The Cummins is running for the Dodge. The Dodge episode's coming out. We got a lot of stuff coming up. So, um, but unfortunately a Hemi in the back of the K car is not in the queue just yet. It's getting there. It's getting there. Oh yeah, it's just one, uh, it's one drain plug bolt. <laughs> one loose drain plug bolt away from, away from getting a Hemi. Hey, no ideas, Aaron. No ideas. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe if you're not filthy, you're not rich, get up there and work on it. Here we go.